Welcome inhabitants of planet Earth and planets beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh and one of the biggest questions and most often I hear is are my vintage jeans authentic? Are they real? Are my Levi's faked? Stuff like that. We're going to talk about how you can know whether or not your jeans are fake or real. Let's get into it. Now it's important to understand that this is a very difficult question as to whether or not your jeans are real or are they fake. And it's not because they can be somewhere in between or half fake or something like that. It's mostly because the possibilities of the variety of different fakes out there are immense, almost infinite. Whereas the possibilities of real jeans are finite. So. There's a lot of different things that you have to take into account and it's not always as simple as follow these rules and you'll find out whether or not your jeans are legitimate real Levi. As an example of this, take the Levi's tag inside of a jean jacket. Notice here it says since 1850. Well, there is a bit of a myth that goes around that says that Levi's was patented in 1873 so therefore since 1850 is a lie and therefore that item is fake. It's just not true. It turns out that Levi's actually used since 1850 in the 80s and 90s as sort of a marketing thing because it was a nice round number. Uh, maybe you can, depending on how you look at the corporate structure of the Strauss family, you could say, oh, they were around since 1850, whatever. The point is, is that they used that in real marketing, not as an indication of whether or not your jeans are fake or not. And because of this, and because of changing standards from decade to decade and era to era, it can be really confusing to determine whether or not your jeans are in fact legitimate. Another thing that happens is that Levi's used leather patches early on in their production and then somewhere around the early 60s, late 50s, they turn to a cardstock for their jeans. Well, it just so happens that in the late 70s, early 80s, for the Levi's Moving On line, they actually started using leather patches again. And to be honest, they look super fake. <laughs> so I wouldn't you know, be surprised if you have a pair of Moving On Levi's that you're like, these are totally fake. They're not fake, they're just crappy. So if you try to create these rules as to how to determine whether or not your Levi's are fake or not, you're gonna have a hard time. I see a lot of YouTube videos that try to give you these hard and fast rules uh, when in reality is there are a lot of exceptions to those rules so you have to really be familiar with Levi's products in the first place. And this really is the best strategy. Uh, with the Secret Service if you are training them to identify counterfeit uh, currency, you don't train them on counterfeit currency because the possibilities of the variations in counterfeit currency are infinite. You train them with real currency and so these law enforcement officers get real familiar with real money so that they can tell when there's a fake one out there because they'll say hey this is this is supposed to be a, this is what a real one looks like this one doesn't look that like that much in the same way with your Levi's you'll have to do that it's also important to understand why somebody might counterfeit a particular product uh, this is a fake Louis Vuitton bag. It's fake. It's clearly fake. It's not well constructed. There's a lot of things that will let you know that this thing is in fact fake. But why would you fake this? Well, if you understand what the price tag of a real Louis Vuitton bag is, you might see the incentive. You could sell this on the side of the road for $600 you know, claiming that it's legit and someone might say, hey, a $600 deal on a $2,000 bag, I think I'll take the chance. And you get to, you know, get the difference of whatever your production cost was versus what you could sell it for. So it makes sense that with high value and high ticket items, you might find a lot of fakes. And then with Louis Vuitton, you find, I find them all the time at their stores. Now, here's the thing about Levi's. Levi's was never particularly expensive. It wasn't a luxury item. So the idea of having 
counterfeits out there uh, doesn't make a ton of sense um, in that there's not a whole lot of profit to be made. You would have to be able to produce the item for way cheaper and sell it you know, at a discount to the retail price or, or right at retail price in order to make any sort of money. That doesn't mean that people over the years did not do that. They certainly did. But I find that it's more often the case that you find imitators uh, or people trying to uh, make you feel like it's a pair of Levi's when in fact there's nothing on it that says Levi's in the first place. Case in point, if you ever go into a thrift store and you start feeling around looking at jeans and you find a jean that you think it feels like a pair of Levi's and in fact they're just faded glory from Walmart, that's because Faded Glory basically ripped off Levi's in the 90s and tried to copy them point for point. Now, but why would you fake Levi's? Well, if you are at all familiar with Levi's, Levi's is a very, very old company and old clothes tend to have some value. And in fact, some pairs of Levi's have valuations of like a million dollars. So it makes sense that if you could figure out how to fake that jean and sell that jean, you could make a lot of money. Uh, so jeans that are of the selvage variety from 1985 and earlier, particularly prior to 1969, that sort of era, you might start seeing more fakes because the value of these jeans goes up significantly over the last 50 years worth of Levi's. Now I have found Levi's from the last 50 years that have attempted to forge or be counterfeits of actual Levi's jeans. Um, and it's very clear in my experience. Incredibly clear that these are fake. They are poorly constructed. They are, branding is way off and it is very obvious they're not in fact real Levi's. And this is why the moving on era of jeans from the early 80s gets so much bad rep and a lot of people tend to think they're fake uh, because like right here, I have a pair right here of the moving on and they just seem like not Levi's quality. The, the denim doesn't look great. It just, something about it doesn't seem right. Um, but when you look at and examine all the areas, they're legit Levi's, they just suck. I'll talk more about moving on jeans in another video. Uh, there are some interesting entries from this line, but yeah, I have a lot of people that show me these and think they're fake, and they're not really fake. Again, they just suck. Now to the part of the video you've all been waiting for. Are my jeans real or are they fake? How do I know? Well, I'm gonna go over about five areas that I look at to determine whether or not I have suspicions of jeans. There's a lot of people out there that claim everything is fake. I'm not that kind of guy. Um, I don't, it's not my, been my experience after handling thousands of pairs of Levi's that there are that many fakes out there in the first place. Um, there certainly are, but I don't necessarily know that on average, if you find one or two pairs, you're gonna have any. Now the first place I look are the rivets. Levi's has rivets here, here, and this is a pair of orange tabs, so they don't actually have the uh, watch portion on the inside here. But I look at the rivets and I see if they are stamped. They should be stamped LS Co. Here on the front, brass rivets. And then on the back, you should find rivets that are flat without holes that also have an LS Co. stamp on them. The without holes part is kind of important because Levi's has used this rivet style for a very, very long time. Uh, in fact, I don't, I can't think of a, a particular model that ever that I found that had uh, rivets with holes inside them on the inside. So that might be a good way for you to determine if they have holes, you might be suspicious. Uh, also with rivets like the silver tab actually had their own sort of rivet and it was like a flat front on the, this rivet. So again, so many exceptions, you just kind of have to learn what is a possibility. Now the next thing I'll check is the back patch. The tricky part about the back patch though is that it's gone through lots of different revisions, subtle and some not so subtle over the years. Uh, this is a, an orange tab back patch so it's a bit different than the red tab back patch. Uh, so you, what you have to do is become familiar with real Levi's back patches. Um, and the truth is that there's a lot of examples out there um, and you'll get familiar with whichever era and you can determine okay is you know this off is the branding off 
Is it spelled incorrectly? That's a really big thing I look for. Is the spelling correct? Levi's is a huge company and they have been for a while. They are going to make sure that stuff is spell checked. Um, so make sure that everything's spelled correctly on your patch. That can be really helpful. Now the fakes that I have come across in the past, it's really obvious on the patch. The patch is messed up. Um, we have the two horse pull, uh, the Levi Strauss, the the lot number, all that sort of stuff on fakes is obviously not a real patch. Now another one I look at is the Arcuate here on the back. These are all sort of important trademarks of Levi's. I look at the Arcuate to check and see if it's constructed well, if it's even. Um, I don't necessarily consider the depth of the Arcuate because in the past the Arcuate dipped quite a bit lower than they do on some of the more modern jeans. Here it's quite a bit sh more shallow uh, than those. So I just look to see if it's stitched well, um, if it's stitched evenly, if it's short on one side, long on the other. That could be to help determine whether or not that particular pair is fake or not. The other thing I look for is the inside care tags. I look and see if they are the right branding, if they've got the right codes on the back, etc, etc. Now again, you have to know what a legitimate pair of Levi's uh, inside tag looks like in order for you to determine whether or not there is something amiss. So you need to study the 60s, which typically was actually just stamped on the pocket bag, um, the 70s, which is a small little tab underneath the left pocket, uh, the 80s and 90s, which is in, found in the same uh, area but has the Batwing logo on it. You need to learn those things in order to determine whether or not there's something wrong. So you need to find a pair of legit Levi's and use those as the reference. The last one I look for are the buttons. I look and see if the buttons are correct. I look and see if the buttons are correct, if they've got the branding on them, if you can turn them around and you find the stamp on the back. It should be a three, two, or one uh, number digit stamp on the back. And that can be super helpful to determine whether or not your jeans are fake or not. Now, it's not generally speaking going to be just all of these items. Because the irony here is with me showing you these things, I'm actually helping, potentially, helping counterfeiters counterfeit better. So you see there's a catch 22 in making these videos and maybe that's one of the reasons why there's not this like handbook of how to identify perfect, perfectly, you know, Levi's over the years uh, because we want to avoid counterfeiters. So experts tend to hold their information to themselves. So I think if I'm looking at a pair of Levi's, I'm going to check those five areas and if everything seems to be lining up pretty closely, I'm going to be more confident that these are legit. If I start seeing inconsistencies, I might start getting suspicious. Doesn't mean I'll write it all the way off, but I'll get suspicious for sure. Now the reason I wanted to discuss this is because for a long time I believed the since 1850 deal and left a lot of good pairs of Levi's and jackets on the rack because I didn't thought they were fake. Because I thought everywhere I looked there was a fake. Then I started realizing that every jacket I found was the since 1850 and I was just like, there's no way that every Levi's jacket I'm in, coming across on a daily basis is fake. There's just, that's just statistically impossible. So be suspicious if you find some inconsistencies. But remember, there's a lot of variations across the generations of Levi's. And you're going to want to get familiar with those before you start pointing out things that are fake, fake, you know, whatever. So if you have a pair of Levi's that you're suspicious of and you want to have confirmation of and you need a little bit more help, email us in the email below at loopfam1 at gmail.com. Send me some photos. I'd love to help you look at it and uh, you know give a second opinion as to whether or not your jeans are authentic or fake. Uh, this is a free service. I just do this for the community to help out. Uh, send me those photos and we'll do our best to try to give you the best uh, confidence in your genes that we can. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hope this helped and gave you some clarity. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.